Hello, this is John, and I'm sharing a video of my Trailmaster Aspen Century camper that is for sale. Give some overview, setup, and some highlights. So here's the camper in its tow behind mode, and this is the camper here in its setup mode, ready to camp. All popped up and uh, ready to camp with its electrical drop cord feeding in. And uh, here's a quick walk around, starting at the front. Um, it's zipped up now, showing um, how it would be in inclement weather, if it's raining or, or, or so forth, um, with the screen zipped up. Uh, this would be the headboard area here. And if you can see the little square at the bottom on that portion, that's where an air conditioner would go. Um, pretty good setup here to pull behind a motorcycle, a small car, SUV. This area I'm outlining here with my finger, this kind of gray area, that's the uh, uh, the basement, I guess you would call it. Um, it rests against the floor or the ground. Um, it's a rubberized, waterproof, pretty thick material. So if you're if it rains or you're in a puddle, it doesn't seep into the into the camper itself. There's also tie down straps and grommets at each corner. So you can put in a tent stake if you would like. Also on each corner there's a grommet. So if you're in windy conditions, you could put like a guy wire and another tent stake to help secure it even more. And there's the other two grommets and straps on each side. So this is um, back to kind of travel mode. If you were pulling up to your campsite and getting ready to uh, to set it up for camping. And uh, we'll give a show around here of some features. The bottom part of the shell is, is hand laid fiberglass and the part that's got like the black ducking or cover over is the camping or tent type material. And the complete fiberglass portion is for storage. It does uh, the, the top part right raises up. I'll show that in a few minutes. Raises up for storage that you can access um, in travel mode like it's sitting now or in camping mode when you have it set up. It's got a full size spare tire. It's got a plug in here. Um, it's got the six pin plug in that um, you can buy these uh, the receptacle portion of it at any auto parts store uh, that would fit into your car. It's not a typical four plug D ring. The tongue is longer than would be coming from factory. It pulls a little better and a lot easier with the longer tongue. I made that. It does have a hitch that is uh, except a one and seven eight inch ball. And I don't have it shown here, but it actually has a, what's called a swivel hitch. Um, it's a little portion that uh, goes between the, the, the silver colored hitch and the tongue. And it allows so you can pull it behind the motorcycle. And as the motorcycle leans over, the camper stays, stays flat. Um, showing here, there are 110 volt or rather 120 volt receptacles on three of the corners. And at the very back, it's a double receptacle here. Uh, so if you're using a fan or radio or something like that, and you just take a drop cord and plug the female end of the drop cord into here, in the this portion here, and that basically energizes all of those outside receptacles, plus it energizes inside receptacles as well for hooking up lights, fans, CPAP machines, or anything of the like. This is a homemade rack I built on the back. It did not come standard with it. I built this personally and custom for this trailer. And I'm outlining here, or I actually have it sized to run uh, to hold a small window unit air conditioner that I have. And you can see it's pretty well reinforced. It's got expanded metal bottom. It's reinforced on the, on the underside with a uh, one inch square tubing. And it's got the lights here. Um, so each of uh, these three lights, the, the square looking lights on the corners are your brake lights. And the one in the middle would be a brake light as well. So that's a brake light, that's a brake light, and that's a brake light. And that would be left turn signal, and that's for right turn signal on that side. And just got some reflective tape around here. You can also see where it's got uh, the expanded aluminum with the bracing on the underside here for heavy weight. And the way I made it again, it's made out of one inch by two inch um, square tubing. And it's welded and put
put in kind of between. It's using the same bolts that hold the fiberglass shell to the frame. So I picked the fiberglass shell up. I put the uh, the rack on there and I bolted it all back together. So it is extremely, extremely secure back here. Plus it gives you extra storage. And I've added a 12 volt plug back here, the typical SAE. If you got a 12 volt cooler or want to want to drop light or something to that effect. Uh, back to the front. Um, again, showing it's got a cooler rack on the front and another 12 volt plug in here. Or you could run a 12 volt cooler. And the 12 volt is supplied through that middle middle plug in there is actually the way I have it wired is energizes those two 12 volt SAE plugs. Um, Multi-purpose there, but I did have them specifically to energize a 12 volt cooler as you're traveling. Uh, just a close-up view of the stabilizer jacks here. You just kind of give it a little tug and it would come out of its slot and you push it down and they're adjustable. You can see a little spring loaded. You would um, kind of put your foot on it and um, raise them up or down. I'll show that during the setup portion. Um, so when you're in camping mode, all four of those stabilizers are, are extended. It's got chrome rims, uh, five lug chrome rims on it. Um, and it's got a, uh, I'll show this in just a moment here. It's got the 5.30-12 inch tires, uh, which are oversized tires, uh, not oversized 12 inches, but oversized 5.30. I think comes standard with it are 4.6 or 4.8 tires. So with the 5.30, the sidewall is a little thicker and uh, gives you a little more clip, a little more ground clearance helps out with uh, running over speed bumps and also helps out quite a bit when you're in the camping mode and putting the stabilizer legs down. Just gives you another couple inches worth of clearance on there. Um, and the cover, uh, waterproof cover that covers the tent material. There's an internal zipper Velcro pocket here. So if you wanted to put some, some stuff in there, folding chairs or things like that, I've got the, the awnings in here and a um, like an outside little AstroTurf type rug that I put under the bottom. I'll show that during the setup as well. So here's setup. So if you were at the campsite, first thing you would do would be um, lower your tongue jack and then extend each of the corner leveling stabilizer jacks. Just go around each corner, kind of flop them all down. Generally, the back ones will come all the way down. The front ones will go about halfway and you have to pick it up and kind of flip the the front jacks into their fully extended position. So you go just like that. And now you would level it up. There's a bubble level on the tongue. Uh, that's what I'm looking at here. And just kind of take your foot and you just kind of pick it up a little bit until it's level. And you just kind of go from one side to the other to get it leveled. It's, and it's very important to have it pretty level front to back and side to side um, for sleeping. Uh, you don't want your feet higher than your head and so forth. So once you get it level, there's a, a bungee cord that goes around all the way on the bottom of the, um, the black cover here. And you would remove the bungee cord. Um, it's got a little hook that hold it in place during travel. So you remove the bungee cord, get your uh, cover out of the way. And then uh, just the way I always did it, I kept the, uh, the awnings and the, uh, the little ground cover rug in, in this portion here. I'll show that in a moment. Just a couple of awnings will show how those go on. And uh, get that out of the way. Take your cover. Just get it out of the way for the time being. And I always had just kind of a place it went when I was in camping mode. So we'll just take it. And uh, if I can get all this unhooked, when the strap wants to hang on. We'll just get it unhooked and uh, just get it out of the way for now. Uh, you see there I got the ground cover. Astro turf carpet, um, just indoor outdoor carpet. Just throw it on the ground and that keeps it, um, the rocks and any other foreign material from trying to penetrate or get in the, in, into the, the bottom, the waterproof bottom of the camper. <clears throat> and so now you've done zip the doors or the door flaps rather. The, the gray one is the outside waterproof cover. The blue one is, um, more of the inside cover and it does have a zippable window screen window and then you would take those door flaps and just kind of roll them up and tie them in uh got little straps to come with you would just tie them down 
just to get them out of the way from setting up once you get those those uh, door flaps out of the way it makes walking in and out a lot easier during setup you don't have that those flaps hitting you in the face constantly just put a little simple like a, like you tying your shoes just a little not a knot but just a time down with a little bow and get them out of the way you walk back to the other side you flip it up you grab the bow you give it a little tug take a step in and then you stand up the center bow pretty simple and then you kind of take your hand and flip over the bed portion and you'll see that pop up Boop, just like that it pops up so now your bed portion is is standing and then you'll take uh the, the the roof rods or roof supports and you just put those in place to hold up the um internal bows and they just kind of clip in place and kind of friction holds them in as they're pressing against each other and it just takes a couple minutes uh, get your mattresses out of the way and this is a little piece of homemade pvc i made um aspen actually started manual or selling these type contraptions here a couple years after i made mine i'm not saying they copied my idea but it's somebody else must have done it um but it's made for this it's just got a couple little pins that um and pre-drilled screws so you kind of extend or, or it's got kind of like telescoping pvc you kind of make it a square for the bottom and then it's got some PVC you put in each of the two front corners on either side of the door opening. And you'll notice how quickly it begins to take shape and gets taut with the uh, the material. And a little extra piece of AstroTurf to give you some carpeting area um, for walking around and changing. And so this right here is uh, getting to the storage area when you're in travel mode. Uh, you can see the blue and the gray on the top. So that's the tent material. Um, and that would be um, the storage mode when you're in camping setup. So you can get to the storage area in either either way. And this is just a shot here showing the back with the, um, the grate, um, or sorry, the storage grate area and the lights and the light bar. And this is showing the inside and it's got LED lights, um, light strips on each of the bows. And they're all, it takes just a minute to wire those in, just basically just plug them in. And that's the mattress area. It does have a queen size sleeping area, a full length and width queen size of so queen sheets and blankets and stuff like that. And this is the little, just showing an outline of the PVC thing I made um, and the way it works. It just kind of friction holds it up in place from the bottom to the bows that are on the top here. And it just keeps the tent material pretty tight, uh, helps from sagging. And you can see those wires, that's where the uh, LEDs are plugged in. And this is a view here with all the windows down showing the, the screening. And just a couple little storage baskets we, we made. You would use these to put clothes in, books, um, socks, underwear, t-shirts, etc. And this is just showing a sample where I have uh, put the um, seam sealer around all the seams to help keep it more waterproof. And here is a um, the cutout for an air conditioner flap. You can choose to use a, a small window unit air conditioner. This is the top of the camper here. It's a heavy duty rubberized material. This is the, the portion over the bed area. And this is the portion over the changing room area. Um, where you would walk in it's heavy duty white material here very thick very much rubberized material um, similar to what the floor is